A local ambulance official says EMS squads across Pennsylvania are struggling with staffing shortages. As WFMZ's Jack Reinhardt explains, the director at the Boyertown Community Ambulance says he believes it will be a long-term challenge statewide. Especially in our department, I mean, you, you knock out one person, I mean, you know, that's that's pretty much substantial for us for a small agency. Boyertown Community Ambulance Executive Director Jeffrey Knopf says he's been noticing a shrinking number of EMS workers across Pennsylvania. Well, I think a couple of things. Um, one is wages. Knopf tells us the starting EMT rate is around 13 or $14 per hour. For a paramedic, $19. And he says other industries are offering higher wages. And you can go work at a warehouse, uh, make $23 an hour, and have your wages paid for uh, as far as medical benefits um, and, you know, sign on bonuses. And a lot of the smaller agencies can't compete with that. According to Knopf, in EMT classes where they would normally see around 30 to 40 people, they're now seeing around 10. He says he believes COVID fatigue is also contributing to declining numbers. People were working around the clock. They got quarantined. They were staying away from their families. Um, and it, it, it took a toll on all of us. As a result, there's a growing list of job and volunteer opportunities. Pretty much any um, agency you can go on to and look. You can also go on to the Eastern PA EMS Council's website um, and look for jobs there. On top of that, Knopf says you can reach out to EMS squads to arrange a ride along. And for anyone who's hesitant to enter the field, he's got a message. It's a rewarding career. It's um, stressful at times, uh, but it's a very rewarding career. In Boyertown, Jack Reinhardt, 69 News. Reading Mayor Eddie Moran's office announced the city is getting nearly $4 million to boost its COVID-19 mitigation and vaccination efforts. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says the funding is part of a two-year, $250 million initiative. The feds say the goal is to improve health literacy in underserved communities. Health literacy is a person's ability to find, understand, and use information and services. Over the next two years, Reading will work with a number of groups to develop a health literacy plan. More details about the effort will be released next week. Montgomery County has announced its COVID-19 mitigation recommendations for the coming school year. The recommendations are dependent on four tiers of community transmission of the virus. There are no mitigation efforts in place when there are less than 10 cases per 100,000 people. After that, unvaccinated people will be required to wear masks indoors and in crowded spaces. If there are 50 cases per 100,000, the county wants vaccinated people to wear masks in those situations as well. Universal masking returns along with testing for all staff if there are more than 100 cases per 100,000. Well, President Biden discussed the long-term effects of COVID-19 while commemorating 31 years of the Americans with Disabilities Act. He says the ADA was a Democratic bill signed by a Republican president. Biden says his administration is trying to ensure those who suffer from long COVID or long-term effects from the virus are taken care of. Symptoms of long COVID COVID can include breathing problems, chronic pain, and fatigue. These conditions can sometimes, can sometimes rise to the level of a disability. So we're bringing agencies together to make sure Americans with long COVID who have a disability have access to the rights and resources that are due under the disability law. The Americans with Disabilities Act was signed into law in 1990 by President George H.W. Bush. The first draft of the bill was introduced by Congress in 1988. The Department of Veterans Affairs is requiring its health care workers to get vaccinated against COVID-19. It's the first major federal agency to issue the requirement. The decision comes as nearly 60 leading medical health care organizations issued a call for health care facilities to require their workers to be vaccinated. Well, the White House says it doesn't plan to lift travel restrictions anytime soon. The decision means visitors from much of Europe, China, India, and other nations are not allowed in the country. It comes as coronavirus cases in the U.S. have surged over the last several weeks. Pennsylvania just saw its biggest weekend total since May, adding nearly 1,700 cases. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki talked about why the administration is keeping the restrictions in place. 
we will maintain existing travel restrictions at this point for a few reasons. The more transmissible Delta variant is spreading both here and around the world. Driven by the Delta variant, cases are rising here at home, particularly among those who are unvaccinated and appear likely to continue in the weeks ahead. Officials say the science on COVID variants does not support a rollback of the restrictions at this time. The select committee charged with investigating the January 6th Capitol insurrection will hold its first hearing tomorrow. Over the weekend, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi appointed a second Republican, Illinois Congressman Adam Kinzinger. He joins Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney and the seven Democrats on the panel. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy withdrew his five nominees after Pelosi vetoed two Trump allies from from the committee. The committee was formed after Senate Republicans blocked an independent bipartisan commission. The Justice Department's offering a plea deal to a Trump supporter who it says brought firearms and explosives to the Washington to Washington on January the 6th. Authorities say they arrested 71-year-old Lonnie Kaufman near the Capitol that day with what one judge called a small armory of guns and homemade bombs. Authorities say he also had a list of Democratic officials leading one judge to say Kaufman was targeting political figures. Well, President Biden says the military campaign in Iraq will finish before the end of the year. Officials say the plan is to shift American forces to advisory and training roles. Biden met with Iraq's prime minister at the White House ahead of that announcement. About 2,500 U.S. troops have remained in Iraq since last year. The plan to end the combat mission in Iraq follows Biden's decision to withdraw forces from Afghanistan nearly after nearly 20 years. Well, some people in Robison Township are expressing concern about a traffic signal. I'll tell you why it may appear that the signal isn't functioning properly. And the PA Game Commission is looking at adding another bird to the endangered species list. Plus, Dan's working on the forecast. Well, it's summer, I wouldn't say humidity is endangered, but it did drop steadily today. And of the next seven days, one is hot. One is humid, which means it's not that bad in terms of comfort to wrap up July. Details in your Berks County seven-day forecast coming up.